and he moves off the basketball. Every big moment he's had, he's taking less dribbles because of his movement. So he's, if he's not able to have that confidence to run the floor freely, it could be a, a long night for Warriors. 3D, you hit it right on the head. The beauty of Klay Thompson is not the fact yeah. that he just shoots the ball, but he he's constant motion. He's moving. He's coming off of pin-down screens. He, gives, he gets the ball, doesn't like his shot. He gives it up. He runs all the way to the other side of the court, forcing the defense to chase him, have eyeballs on him, figure out where is this guy at. The defense starts to shift. When Klay Thompson comes off a screen, guess what? That's how somebody like a Boogie Cousin gets open for easy slip because two guys go to Klay Thompson. Well, if he's not able to move, you're not able to get that type of ball movement. You're not able to get the easy looks inside. So it'll be interesting to see how healthy Klay Thompson is, but I have faith in Klay. I have faith in the Golden State Warriors training staff. I don't think they would let him go out there if he wasn't 100%. Well, not, well at least close, close to, to, close to 100%. Right, right, right. Because a hamstring isn't an injury. You can go out there and fake it through. Right. It's not an ankle sprain. It's not a shoulder. If you go out there with a hamstring and it's compromised and you try to play, you will hurt yourself severely and you will miss a lot of time. Yeah, you could tell it was agonizing for Clay to watch after 120 straight postseason games, second longest streak to LeBron James. Let's get to Boogie because in game two, B. Wood, we saw adrenaline and really that want. He had never been at this, this moment, this level. All of that come out. It gave 28 minutes that was beyond what I think anybody could have expected off of that long layoff with that injury in his lower half. But then it seemed like everything came crashing down. Couldn't get off, get any lift. Missed a lot of layoffs. They really missed Looney. Do you expect it might actually go the wrong direction in this case? And we've seen the best of Boogie in this series in that game. Too. I don't want to say we've seen the best of Boogie, but in game three, Boogie didn't have any Boogie. I'll tell you that. He really couldn't get off the ground. And a lot of it just simply comes down to they had to use him so much in game two. I don't think his body recovered. When you come back from injuries, you're on a minutes restriction for a reason because they're giving your body a chance to ramp up and get back into shape so that you don't play one night and feel like garbage the next night. Well, Boogie doesn't, didn't have that luxury because Kevon Looney went out, so he plays eight minutes or so in the first game, then he comes back and has to play 28 in the second, and you could clearly see that he was compromised, his legs were heavy, he had zero lift, and he didn't have the type of night that he would want to have in this type of situation on a big stage. Somehow find the confidence, learn from games one and three, which you did, excuse me, two and three, and which you did well, and get ready for game four. Hey, look, the Raptors, uh, we've seen some differences, including individually Siakam in games one and three. But how about the three instances in a finals game since the three-point shot was adopted going back 78-79 where we saw 50-40-90. Also, first time that all five starters, not only double figures, but 17-plus since our own guy, the Jet, Kenny Smith and company, back in the finals game one of 95. The Raps looking ahead to game four and uh, Kawhi keeping it simple. Maybe very important. I mean, there'll be a third win and you need four to win. Uh, you already know how important that is. It's, it's 3-1. I think we got to continue to just stay in the moment, um, continue to push the pace, and, and continue to play defense the way we know how to play defense and, and, and try to and do what we can do, you know, and control what we can control. Well, I'll tell you what, even though a lot of the talk was about what happened with the fan, let's start with Kyle in 3D. He's controlled a lot. Zero points in that one game against the Magic, bounce back. First two games against Milwaukee, huge series after that. First two games of this series, not great. Game three, he was enormous. He's changed the narrative of how you look at Kyle Lowry and how he's played in the past in the playoffs. He's changed his game where before you would think the point guard had to get 20 points every night. This is defense, his leadership, and on the defense side of the ball, he's taking more charges than anyone right now in the playoffs left. So that lets you know he's willing to do the dirty work. And we always talk about the point guard and the head coach being in connection, being connected to one another. They're doing that now with Nick Nurse and, and Kyle Lowry. Speaking of being connected, all the Tar Heels are, of course. They are family after all. Oh, you know. Just ask them. Uh, and Tar Heel legend and Long Island native, which I like, Danny Green, was so big yesterday. And when you think about him, he's the kind of shooter, as Steve Kerr said, media availability, you have to respect and pay attention to. He wasn't happy with the defense leaving him open in some spots. And in that corner, he has become absolutely lethal and was in game three. Danny Green is excellent at knowing what his game is all about. He is all about pacing, pacing space and hitting the spot of three. You see, he's getting out in transition, getting right to that corner, hitting big time shots. Hit six threes in this game, went six for 10. Only had four threes in the whole Eastern Conference Finals. Really struggled, got his confidence back just in time to really show up big on the big stage and they need Danny Green when you're a star like a Kawhi Leonard 
your role players like Danny Green, they give you the space to operate because when those guys hit shots, it creates more space for you. And when we see Danny Green and some of the other guys on this team that are role players hitting big time shots, that gives Kawhi a lot of room to op operate inside. That's why he's able to have a nice 30 point night, 21 points in the second half like he did. Green, Lowry, Van Vliet, Gasol in game one. The others and the depth of the Raptors has been in the forefront. One man tried to pretty much do it on his own in a historic night for Steph back in game number three. And then some, but then it was even another level, if you can believe that, for Steph. In a brilliant game number three, 45-5, five, five plus in a finals game. That's a pretty impressive list. Steph on game three, the rest of this series, and more with our own Kristen Ledlow. I so see you've done this a long time at the highest level down 2-1 in the finals. What's your most effective response as a leader? Just staying with, sticking with the program. Um, you obviously come in every series, whether it's the finals or whatever round, uh, with the expectation of dominating and creating your momentum early. Uh, but if it doesn't go that way, you can't, you can't panic. We, we, we're confident and comfortable in who we are as a team. No, we have some injuries, but uh, there are things that we can adjust and correct to, uh, you know, take care of game four. And no matter how many games it takes, just keep fighting. Uh, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, outlast them. They're playing well right now. And, you know, we got to do something about it. You did record an historic performance in game three. What was your mentality taking the court, knowing that the majority of the offensive responsibility would be yours? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's pretty clear in terms of, you know, missing Katie and Clay. That's almost 50 points of production on a nightly basis and, and the way that we create offense. Um, you know, it's definitely by committee, but in terms of just being aggressive, trying to force the issue in turn and, and, and look for shots that, that I know I can take and make, um, playing off my teammates when, when, when the, uh, the flow was, was, was necessary. Um, I just wanted to give it all I had really and you know that has to continue the rest of the series and I mean no better stage in the finals to uh to to play like that and and just have fun doing it and, and obviously want to you know make it towards a win you know game four. I know it's difficult if not impossible to quantify losing those all-star teammates but how do you feel your team has responded on a nightly basis as those rotations have changed? I mean we're in the finals and we're in, a, in solid shape because of that mentality throughout the entire playoffs. We've had 10 starting lineups and um, you know, guys been put in positions that honestly they hadn't been all season. And the common denominator is just competing and, and, and having confidence in each other and playing with energy. And that's something we can build on you know, the rest of the series. And then we can execute a little bit better, uh, elevate our defense a little bit more and get right back into the series. So a lot has been thrown at us, and, you know, that's, that's what basketball does to you at times. you got to kind of overcome the circumstances, and, and we're in that situation right now. And as you've had the opportunity to watch some film and look at necessary adjustments, what do you want to see primarily in the opening minutes here at Oracle? Yeah, that was a big thing. First quarter, we gave up 36 points in game three, and no matter how, many, how much you score, uh, they're such a well-balanced team. Uh, when guys get confidence, it, it carries throughout the rest of the game. And and every time we got close and tried to get over the hump, it was a different guy making a shot, whether it's Danny Green or Kyle Lowry or Van Vliet. It was, um, you know, they just had the flow going. So we have to try to take that away early and make them think, make them uh, press a little bit and really assert our defensive, you know, intelligence early. Uh, I think that's the one thing we were missing, you know, last game. I understand we had to produce on offense with guys that were missing, but defensively that's just what's going to win us this game uh, game four and, and the rest of the series. Thanks, Steph. No problem, Kristen. Thank you, Kristen and Steph. A lot of parts of Steph's game, and it's unbelievable to even say this, have been underrated. I think we realize that when people seem to be surprised after KD went down in that Houston series, 
the way Steph bounced back, but the leadership may be the most underrated. And the way he played, guys, it, look, inspirational is the only word you could almost use. The diving on the floor, the fact that he was seemingly giving everything he had, even down 17 with three minutes to go, acting as if it's a tie game in a game seven. What does that say to the rest of his teammates, many of whom will be in spots again, DZ in game four and were in game three that he said they haven't been in before in their careers? Well, when some teams say next man up or next men up, a couple players, you're putting them to your point in a situation they haven't been in for since possibly college or overseas where they may play. But the leadership you're talking about, the culture that this franchise has built the last seven years is showing us right now the leadership, playing the right way. I was shocked when I'm watching B-Wood that he's getting this 45 pretty easy. He's not forcing things. He maybe took maybe one bad shot. Everything yeah. else was in the flow and what the Warriors do. So I wasn't shocked. I was more like, wow. He's reminding us on how good he really is. Yeah, just in case you forgot, Steph, yes. Steph Curry reminded everybody <laughs> how he used to play before Kevin Durant got here when he was able to take 20, 25 shots per game and not have to worry about deferring a lot. So when we saw Steph Curry come out there, step his game up, take the shots, he knew he had to have a big night, and he really tried to put this team on his shoulders. Didn't really get enough help, especially on the defensive end. That's where they really struggled. 109 is good scoring-wise, but they gave up 123. So he didn't really get enough help on the defensive side of the ball to pull it off. But it was amazing to see him play uh, at that level. The shots he was hitting, the degree of difficulty. And we know what Steph Curry can do. But he just every once in a while, he has to remind us, hey, mm -hmm. we have this KD guy here. He's pretty good. So I, de I defer to him. But don't sleep. I can get this done, too. <laughs> and to your point, a lot more room than I think many of us yeah. thought. Considering all that jankiness that he saw the day before, uh, they'll break that down on the court and more in part of the day. A guy who's never janky with his jumping, he'll be playing till he's 60 if you keep paying him and giving him the minutes. My goodness, those legs. Because he still can do that. Half man, still amazing. Okay, basketball fans, we're on the court to break down what happened in game three and what adjustments need to be made for game four. Half man, half amazing, Vince Carter, B. Wood, we're going to start with you, Half Man, Half Amazing. Talk about how Kawhi Leonard was so effective in Game 3. He was able to get to his spots. The Raptors had great spacing, and they knocked down shots. All right, we're going to get right into it. I'm going to show right. you two examples of isolation on a big and on a small. Lee Ellis, you're going to get in the corner. Justin Kimber, you get down the block. I'll be the screen. All right, he gets in the pick and roll. He wants the big in isolation. He knows he has the big in isolation. He wants to create space. The reason he wants to create space is when he beats him off the dribble, he wants to get off the dribble. Obviously, because of the ability of Siakam's cutting to the basket, he wants him there. He can get to the basket. If he cannot get to the basket, he's drawing the help side. He draws the help strong side. He has Danny Green. He gets deep. He has Siakam's man. He has the, the drop-off pass. Or if he gets into the paint, let's say this way, help off the Gasol, he gets the Gasol, either he has a shot, he has a swing to Kyle Lowry in the corner. Now, let's bring it back, you don't have to go there. Uh -huh. Let's say now, we flip, you guys flip, we have the point guard, Kyle Lowry has set the screen, now he has a point guard. He gets into his isolation, to his back down, where he can get deep enough to where he has those big hands, he can shoot his one hand floater, or he goes to the same thing. He gets down, he knows the double team from the point guard coming, reverse dribble, Kyle Lowry for the three, you have Gasol here, or strong side help, and that's how he's able to either get to the free throw line and get fouls, or he can get his great three-point shooters in uh, Danny Green, or Kyle Lowry, or even Marc Gasol, open looks, and they're knocking him down. How important is it for, uh, for Kawhi to attack the defense with all the switching the Warriors do to keep them on their heels? That's what you want to do. They're going to throw the janky defense and, and different looks at them. Well, you want to get downhill and as many times you can get to the free throw line and score with the, the clock stop or create open shots for your great shooters. That's what he's doing. You have to do that, especially when you're on the road. All right, let's break down now the Raptors defense. B. Wood, should they bring back the janky defense they showed us in game two they should, to slow down Steph Curry? They should definitely bring back the janky defense, but more importantly, than being janky, they need to make sure they're in Steph Curry's face. Don't give him a lot of clean looks. He had 47 big points, but he got a lot of good looks, 3D. 3D, really you did. a shooter. You know what yes. it is. When you get good looks, that basket gets a lot bigger, a lot wider. So the bigs have to do a better job in the screen and roll game, and that's what I'm going to show you. All right, let's bring out Oakland Tech, some young kids here from, from Oakland, California. Break it. Where's Steph okay. Curry at? Hustle up there, Steph. Come on, where's Clay? Come on, hustle up there. Let's there go. go. Let's go. Hustle up. Where we are. 
Now, the problem with Steph Curry is he has incredible range. He's able to shoot as soon as he crosses, goes across half court. The average big is taught to patrol the paint and stay back here on, in screen and roll situations. What happens is what they have to do is Gasol, who I'm going to be, has to make sure that he's up at the level of touch. As soon as the screen is set, he's not back here. He's not over here. He is right here where Steph Curry is seeing a wall, and they are jumping this screen as soon as he comes off. So it is either a double team or a soft double, and then I'm kicking out and getting back to my man. Now, let me see the ball. Outside of that, we can also go down to the pin down action. Okay. Once again, you always have to be at the level of the ball. Steph Curry has the ball. This time we're going to show Klay Thompson coming off of a pin down. If you're a Gasol, if you're a Baca, I cannot say how important it is that you are at the level worrying about Steph or Clay, not worrying about your man. That is not your responsibility. You have help on the weak side. So now here comes the pin down. You can't be back there. Have to be at the level of the screen. Throw him the ball. On the catch, so we're almost doubling. Then when you kick me out, Vince is going to tell me where to go. I recover stay back home, to my man, home. and we load up and we Good. show a crowded paint. That is some key adjustments that I think that the, Toron that the uh, Toronto Raptors have to make because they have to make sure Steph Curry is not able to go for another big number again. Because I tell you what, if he goes for another 47 or 45 point game with Klay Thompson coming back, it could be trouble for the Raptors. With so much switching in the finals, how important is it for communication for the Raptors when Steph or Clay gives the ball up and they run off multiple screens? Listen, communication is key on defense. You have to know where those guys at, where those guys are at. Golden State only has two shooters right now with Kevin Durant not playing. There's no excuse not to know where Clay and Steph are at all times. Make sure you're able to communicate, and more importantly, you're giving up shots to guys like Iguodala and Draymond Green to give more help on those guys. So they have to make sure those guys see a crowded paint, and on top of that, at the three-point line, got to make sure everybody knows exactly where they're at. No clean looks for those guys. That's one for you. How big is it for the Raptors bench to shoot the ball very well with confidence for Game Four? Absolutely. I mean, they 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 know they can beat these guys for one. Mm -hmm. So you want to continue to shoot the ball with confidence, play as if you know we can win this game. And I think a confident Kyle Lowry opens the game up for all of their other players. Half man, half amazing, B. Wood. Game three. Let's see who makes the best adjustments for game four Friday night. Look how well Tech and UNC could work together after all. Vince Carter could still do that. We'll stick at our suit jackets when we come back. Don't move. TV, try it now. Game time live in the NBA Finals presented by YouTube TV continues. And Danny Green continues to show, hey, look, you get him in rhythm, especially with as open as he was getting himself in game number three. Trouble for everyone else because, if, after all, he is, of course, Brendan A. UNC legend. That is correct. Uh, that UNC legend with uh, our own legend, a member of our crew, Chris Lello. You're now two wins away from a championship, which sounds simple enough but having done it before having been there how do you focus on the daily task at hand uh, it's not simple at all uh, so we have a lot of work to do um, especially against the team and the challenge that we have ahead of us these guys are not gonna they're not gonna give in they're not gonna quit uh, they're champions they're winners uh, by nature so we have to do a, a lot of the little things the details and knowing that those two wins are gonna be you know a fight very hard for it scrappy and it's going to take everything we got, all the energy we can, can give uh, for 48 minutes and a lot of focus. Your team has won six of its last seven postseason games. Making these necessary adjustments after losses, how much credit should be given to your team for its responses despite circumstances? Oh, a lot of credit to the coaching staff as well um, and, and to our stars. You know, Kawhi has done a great job of, of picking apart uh, the defense, analyzing it and figuring out what the spots are. Kalo has been more aggressive in analyzing uh, what he's done and what he needs to do. And Marcus Saul, uh, and even our bench, Fred, Norm, Serge, those guys come off the bench and have been a huge plus for us in the past series and in this series. But we know that each game is different. It's not a momentum swinger or, you know, each game carries over. We'd like to think so. We hope so. You know, given the way we shot last night, we hope the momentum carries over. Uh, but it may not. And we have to play better defensively. And we know tomorrow they're going to be a different team. And it's going to be a different game, a different momentum, a, a different atmosphere, and a, a lot of different energy out there that we're going to have to try to enforce our will on the game. You were now famously told to let it fly before the game. How did that phrase affect your mindset? Uh, I mean, that was always my mindset anyway. It didn't change much. I think everybody since the Milwaukee series has been telling me to let it fly. 
um, given the fact that I've had some struggles with the shooting. And then you know, just don't think about it. I mean, I'm going to keep shooting. I'm a shooter. That's what I do. Uh, the other guys did a great job of being aggressive and, and not thinking about it. Pascal, Kalo came in aggressive. Um, you know, Fred always, you know, playing his, his normal game. And so just our pace helped us, allowed guys to be more aggressive. And I would be remiss in my responsibility if I did not bring up that our Shaquille O'Neal, yeah. the pure shooter, yes. you've dubbed him, yeah. gave you some encouragement before yeah. the game. I talked to him briefly every time. I, you know, obviously we were teammates. Um, I was lucky to play for some great teams and against and with some great players. Uh, Shaq's been around the game for so long. He knows so many players. Uh, he's played with so many great players, won so many championships. Even though he's not a pure shooter, um, you know, he knows the game. He knows the fundamentals, and he's always reminded me uh, of you know the things that I need to do uh, to be successful. And that's why he was such a he probably, you know, in my opinion, you know, the greatest big man to ever play the game, the greatest center, the most dominant. Um, not because he was so athletic and so big, but because he worked on his footwork. He did the little things, the fundamentals, got in the paint, sealed. Uh, and, and, you know, who knows how, how great or, or what he'd been if, if he had the, the free throws or the touch. But, um, you know, he knew the fundamentals. He said he worked on those things. Um, but, um, you know, he, he reminded me last night to continue to hold my follow through, which he says leave it. That's his way of saying hold your follow through and stay in the shot. You say things like that about Shaq. That's how you definitely get this interview on the air. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it worked also when you uh, take 3D's line from Shooter's Paradise and use it to then go help your former rookie. I'm talking to you, Shaq, but we'll continue that discussion before game four. We'll Leave come it. back with more. Leave this. We continue here game time live at the finals presented by YouTube TV. Dinosaurs to dynamite indeed. Danny Green and others not only getting those uncontested shots that they got in game two, but hitting them. And big three seemed to stymie all the momentum that Curry and company attempted to create through what was a wild game three. We continue with you game time live at the NBA Finals uh, presented by YouTube TV. Statement just came out here from uh, Warriors investor Mark Stevens. I'll read it to you. It says, I take full responsibility for my actions last night at the NBA Finals. I'm embarrassed by what happened. What I did was wrong. There's no excuse for it. Mr. Lowry deserves better. I reached out today to directly apologize to him and other members of the Raptors and Warriors organizations. I'm grateful to those who accepted my calls, and I hope Mr. Lowry and others impacted by this elapsed in judgment our understanding that the behavior I demonstrated last night does not reflect the person I am or have been through in my life. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I need to be better and look forward to making it right. And then says I fully accept the punishment administered by the NBA and the Warriors. Deserves most likely a lifetime ban, but there's nothing more he could say that would be better than that. That's perfect. It's good he, what he said. It's good what he said. He's a human. We've all made mistakes in life. Nobody walks a perfect path, but the fact he's willing to step up and make, realize he made a mistake, I'm okay. Yeah, when you make mistakes, it's not about the mistake after that. It's about what you do after that as far as basically saying, hey, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I'm moving forward, and I know my behavior was out of line. So I, no, 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 nothing more he can really do at this point. Is that what you told your coaches after you took a bad shot, would? I didn't take any bad shots. Have you ever seen me play? Well, all, I did, all, all, all I did was dunk and shoot jump books. Game time live <laughs> at the finals, YouTube TV.